fahren wir fort mit unserem nächsten jetzt nicht sondern Joko. So I'm very happy to welcome Miss Konker and Clara Ayon and uh, Julia Lohmann, many of you may know her. She's our new professor for Grundlagen and Film in Design and Künstlerische Arbeit. And she invited the two. I'm very happy that you made it. As a triple, there's a third person in my office, a little one. So, uh, well, thank you very much for joining us, and Julia is taking off. Thank you. Brauchen wir noch ein Mikrofon oder hört ihr uns? Können wir das Mikrofon noch ein bisschen näher haben? Ja, ich freue mich sehr, euch heute ähm, Niki Flunder und Jaime Hayon ähm, vorstellen zu können. Wir kennen uns schon ein paar Jahre und haben uns in London kennengelernt, als die beiden äh, ein paar Jahre dort gewohnt haben. Mittlerweile sind sie zurück nach Spanien, nach Valencia gezogen, äh, arbeiten aber absolut global. Ähm, es ist das erste Mal, dass die beiden ihre Arbeiten gemeinsam präsentieren. Das freut mich ganz besonders und macht mich äh, sehr glücklich, dass das hier an der Hochschule ist, weil ähm, beide aus sehr unterschiedlichen Themenbereichen kommen, aber ihre gemeinsame Praxis sich absolut nicht in die Segmentierung von Design oder Kunst oder Produkt oder also, äh, verschiedenen Arbeitsformen eingrenzen lassen, sondern einfach ähm, sehr absolut übergreifend arbeiten. Ich stelle Ihnen jetzt die beiden vor und dann werden wir hier einfach einen Dialog vorne auf der Bühne haben über ihre Arbeitsweisen auf Englisch. Ähm, Im Hintergrund werden die Werke zu sehen sein als Continuous Stream sozusagen. Vielleicht stoppen wir ab und zu und sprechen über die einzelnen Werke und danach ähm, werden wir dann äh, für Fragen bereitstehen. Ähm, zuerst möchte ich gerne Nienke Glunder vorstellen. Äh, sie hat äh, an der Breda Fine Art Academy Kunst studiert, ist Holländerin, ähm, ist erstmals bekannt geworden in den späten 90ern, glaube ich Anfang 2000, ähm, durch eine Porträtserie, in der sie sich selber inszeniert hat in Stereotypenrollen unserer Gesellschaft. Das heißt, sie hat selber diese Rollen angenommen, einige Bilder werden da auch gleich zu sehen sein, um zu hinterfragen, in was für Schubladen wir eigentlich denken und wie wir eigentlich versuchen, die Person, die wir sehen, immer gleich ähm, zu kategorisieren und nicht nur Personen, sondern Objekte und die Welt um uns herum. Ähm, nach ihrem Studium wurde sie, äh, ist sie zu Fabrika gegangen, dem Research Center, das damals in Mailand stattfand, hat dort äh, Jaime kennengelernt und seitdem sind die beiden nicht nur ein Paar, sondern beeinflussen sich gegenseitig, haben jeweils halt ihre eigenen Arbeiten, aber die, die zwei Arbeiten oder die verschiedenen Arbeiten beeinflussen sich gegenseitig und stehen sehr eng im Dialog miteinander. Jaime Hayon selber kommt aus einem Industriedesign-Hintergrund, hat ähm, in Madrid, Mailand und Paris Industriedesign studiert und ist, ähm, was man im Englischen ein Renaissance-Man man nennen würde. Also, im Englischen gibt es diesen Begriff des renaissance Mans, das bedeutet, jemand wie Leonardo da Vinci zum Beispiel, jetzt um ganz hoch zu greifen, jemand, der einfach äh, in verschiedenen Kategorien arbeitet und sich nicht in eine Kategorie begrenzen lassen würde. Ähm, Leonardo da Vinci ist sehr hoch gegriffen und es ist sehr schade, dass ich so weit zurückgreifen muss, denn solche renaissance Men, Leute, die sich wirklich Kategorien übergreifend einem Werk widmen, sind selten heutzutage und ich glaube, das macht gerade die Stärke des Designs aus, dass man das eben machen kann. Ähm, mit seinen Arbeiten ähm, bewegt er sich sowohl im industriellen, absolut industriellen, klassischen Rahmen als auch in äh, künstlerischen Galeriekontexten. Er hat als Kunden oder Kollaboratoren Baccarat, Fritz Hansen, Magis, ähm, wie die Barcelona, Yadro und verschiedene Firmen aus der ganzen Welt, äh, arbeitet viel mit japanischen Firmen zusammen ähm, und hat mir gestern im Gespräch gesagt, dass er eigentlich in Europa, in jedem Land, 
mittlerweile mit Firmen zusammengearbeitet hat, außer Deutschland, was ich sehr interessant fand. Ähm, genau, jetzt übergebe ich an Kreine und Nike und wir werden jetzt auf Englisch weitersprechen und ähm, I'll start this dialogue simply with the question, with the title of the symposium. Maybe we can get in the lights as well to see the pictures. Um, why do you design and what's kind of your driving force? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, well, the first thing, the first image you see, it's um, we didn't know what to bring today. We we work a lot, you know. We've been working nonstop. Actually, we we are very passionate in what we do, and uh, so we didn't know what to what to choose. But we chose a lot of images. Some images were taken by Ninka, like this one here, or some images are from our trips or inspirational images that then transform into projects and uh, became projects that are, well, at the beginning was very working with galleries we had no money so i started to um well this image here for example shows one of the first uh, projects which was working with ceramics and uh it was through a gallery called david gill and uh, well the beginning was not very sure i studied industrial design my teachers were very much into a very traditional way of looking at design the first thing i did was um start from zero really i just started to work with ceramics proposed project result was that by making things with the hands, it started to, to move the career. And this is my beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, to respond to your question, why do we start to design or why do we design? Uh, I think we design because we, we love to, uh, you know, we love it. We just love the, the, the idea of like um, oh, being so cre yeah. creating our world as well. Exactly. We love to see beautiful things. We love to be surrounded by beautiful things. And some things have to be improved. <laughs> and, uh, Therefore, we design. That, that, that's no. Ninka's work, actually. You can see it. So she does a lot of. This is not really designing. Well, this is, is it? my personal work, <laughs> which is completely opposite from what Jaime does. But in some some way, our worlds combine at a certain moment. And I did a lot of sequences before, in which I explore uh, kind of a popular world and the aesthetics, the pressure we have, especially on um, the female. I think, and this is one of my sequences. Yeah, it, it was fine this morning because we said, we said like, uh, okay, how do we show the work together? We've never spoken together, but we've been lately uh, starting to work together in a more, let's say, signature way. But the funny thing is like, we've known each other since already like almost 10 years and we've always had fun. You know, we've always like went to places and created our own little planet. We always share studio. We always talk about everything. Now we had a baby, so we also did a baby, <laughs> and we also got married. <laughs> so, but the thing was that whatever I was doing, for example, when I started to make this bathroom back already like eight years ago, you know, we discussed about everything. How do we make this leg? Is that, is that a good thing? What kind of materials do we use? So in every project, no matter what, if she was doing a sequence for her own um, artwork, or she was doing an experimental research, we've always discussed, and we've discussed in many ways, and we thought it was nice today to be invited because of this special matter is that we open a dialogue in between our both disciplines. And I think both disciplines today, they've united to make the work better. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong with that, yeah. but you know, this is kind of how it goes. So I thought we create yeah. a whole world around it. So for example, this was uh, the Showtime collection and we uh, decided that it needed to go, come along with a campaign photographs, a series of photographs in which we kind of dressed up as Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And um, that was to kind of illustrate the whole thing and to make it more a fantasy um, collection. That's our baby. That's our baby. <laughs> you can hear him there. He also wants to participate. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, it's kind of nice because what we felt from the beginning was that, um, I mean, you know, this shows a little bit the inspiration. Like we, we kind of go around and observe things. You know, for example, that ray of light made that mirror there with the diffusion of light. Or, you know, looking at atomic things, you know, we thought, hey, there's a friend that makes ceramics. And we proposed to make this chandelier, which was based on that. But then Ninka was doing her portraitures, which are completely different, completely based in something else. But the image, which is what she's talking about, the fact of reflecting that a project is not only, you know, just a three-dimensional thing, but it combines also a communication and so on, uh, became quite interesting into that at the end of the day, what we like when we confront design is to talk about themes and to talk about surprise and to talk about things like that. And this photography, her work, does that. 
as much as this talks about atomic things, as I showed before, there is always a theme behind. And that theme behind is what, at the end, unites us. You know, and this is quite, um, for me, it's quite interesting to look at it today. Uh, we will present also, we, we have some images of the work what we've done together, but um, we'll come into that. But uh, I think you can see visually how some ideas, you know, come from, from one thing to the other. It's kind of like we're living a life in which things are interrelated by just looking with a third eye at things and being very open. We think that an idea can get out of a lot of different things, of observation, of discussion. This is, uh, you can maybe speak about that a little bit. So I also always made a series of portraits of Jaime which went along with the projects we did. And um, since I really love to dress myself up, I decided also that Jaime should be dressed up and he was happy to, to go so along with that. So I did the same. <laughs> so um, it started, I think, well, you were dressed up as a, as a bunny rabbit. Yeah, and we had a real exactly. bird and um, that, that was kind of the starting point. And from that, for every project we did, another project of another portrait came along. So the portraits we just saw is kind of, you see him with the Pinocchio nose and that's exactly the portraits. Well, you saw before the Pinocchio. And for this, this one, which we don't show, um, you jumped out of a plane, right? Exactly, but we didn't put that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the thing was that it was quite interesting because whenever we, um, we talk about the project we had. I mean, every morning we have a completely different life. At the moment we live in the south of Europe. Uh, we wake up in the morning, we don't have a big studio. We do a lot of things though. And what we do generally is like, we wake up in the morning, we just bring the sketchbooks into a cafe and we start to speak, you know, about hey, what do we have? You know, what other projects that we're talking about? Um, there's a lot of, we never really talk about how are we gonna resolve a specific problem, even though there's millions of them in every project we do and we probably create new problems. But in the last years, we've done things very randomly, more thinking about the passion of things than thinking too much about what was that problem about, what did the client made before, what was the thing, you know, there's a lot of questions that are there in the air. And the funny thing is like today, you know, we both work for galleries that are very renowned. We both work for companies that are very serious in design. After this trip on Sunday, I'm taking the boat and well, the train that goes into the boat to Copenhagen, I go every two weeks. I work with Fritz Hansen, it's a very stable company with a big tradition in design, uh, very much like Vitra could be for Germany or you know Switzerland. It's kind of like this link of very, very, um, very stable and very serious design. And you know, I think if you make a chair, it has to be a chair that works. But if you make a sculpture, it has to be a sculpture that has something. You know, the tendency is to work with companies that have a good craft that they're good, um, you know, making things. And I think, you know, in the projects that now we are undertaking together, there's a lot of discussion about how do we make things better? How do we look at detail of things? And I think we had this luck in the last years to work with very good craftsmen people. Like, you know, this is Bacara, for instance, which is a very interesting company for, for the crystal. You know, we, we always went there as little boys, you know, trying, little girls, you know, trying to understand what was this thing about, very naive, with no pretension, no, just sitting down, let's look at the materials, let's look at how can we learn about this, and eventually with passion and ideas, we could help to make a better future for it, you know. But using the old craftsmanship and really concentrating on what they're good at, so not reinventing the wheel, but kind of keep on going with the same wheel, but giving it a new swing, let's say. Yeah. So, so yeah. The previous a new speaker, style. Yeah. Axel Kukus was saying that design in a way is um, kind of able to step from one context to the other and almost mix, kind of mix context or, or combine um, disciplines that were previously separate. Do you see this as kind of some way in which you work as well or in which you have this ability that you come in almost into different contexts with your fresh eyes and you adapt to them or? Well, uh, you want to respond to that or should I respond? I guess. Respond, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we what we do is is that, in general, you know, when when we are invited to to work for a project or we propose something, we have the tendency of uh, of like, um, how can I say? Oh, that's her. <laughs> she has a lot of fun. <laughs> but uh, you know, we try we try to um, um, to be very realistic with what we have in front, you know, and we try to discuss a lot in, into should we make this project too much of the line of what they want to do or shall we just propose something completely different though respect you know respecting the dna of things because a lot of times we we've, we spoke about that a lot you know about how if things are 
you know. Well, you actually never want to work according to a brief. <laughs> exactly. You're always proposing <laughs> everything, and I probably pull him a little bit more back in to kind of really think about the the matter. Yeah, it's coming back. Don't worry. Yeah, the thing the thing is like I started to realize that uh, you know there's a lot of people in these marketing departments and all these people that analyze big companies and that they're behind and they kind of come to you going like okay that's what we need so they know exactly what they need and to be honest I believe every day less and less of these analytics because they don't work. First of all, the market and I can tell you a lot of people that are in that market that are very professional and they're doing well they're all contradicting each other. Everybody says, no, that's what's going to work, that's what's going to work, that's what's going to work. Well, sorry, that's not what it works. So I think design work, design world, in the way we look at things and confront the projects, it's more like, you know, we're kind of questioning things. You know, we put an example, this was like a chair in a place, they make wood. We went to this atelier, these people have made chairs for 60 years, they've been really good. We made a chair out of discussion. How many pieces do we use in the atelier, gluing things? There was almost no drawings, there was almost no traditional way of looking at things, but it was fun. It was fun just discussing in the place. So what we do a lot of times is sort of reinventing the way we work and sort of questioning if this is the right way or no. In the next project, we should transform it completely different. What we do know at the end is that it has to be fun to work. And it's not responding just of a question. It's not the traditional point. At the end of the day, this chair, you know, it is quite unique in its way, you know? It's made like with this circle thing, it has 22 pieces. It was the first chair we've ever made in wood. But it still works. Uh, this is a company in Italy called Cecotti. But the thing is, like, every project is a world. But the idea is that we go to the place and we work with people that we really like. We work with people that are, you know, questioning boundaries. Of course, this is Ninka. <laughs> you know, she transforms herself I'm all sorry, the time. I so how can we not transform? Yeah, for me, she's the perfect wife because obviously I have all these <laughs> ladies, you know? <laughs> so what can I say? But. Uh, <laughs> But I think it's really, I, I think, yeah, my mother got really freaky when I said that was my girlfriend at the time. You know? <laughs> but my brother was really happy though when she saw this one. So, <laughs> so there's all these, so you know, at the end of the day, I think we just really have fun with what we do. And, uh, and we probably don't want to take it too serious. Yeah, that's a really good, good one. <laughs> so um, to jump to your work with the American Chateau, yeah. it's kind of, it's a very comprehensive, um, exhibition or kind of body of work where you both work together with sculptures from you and objects from you is that part of it no no no, no, no that's coming that's it that, that was a shop we did in a jewelry store actually which was quite uh, quite a challenge yeah. but um, that work was shown at the um, spring studios in london in a gallery context and it was super interesting for me at least to go because i know both of your backgrounds i know both of your work and it somehow combined a lot of your um pieces, they were almost questioning popular culture, questioning the validity of uh, the world we surround ourselves with or we believe in and Hollywood and all this. Um, and at the same time, it combined it with your designs that are almost affirmative of this world, that are almost like at the core of this world. I mean, mm -hmm. you work in Dubai, you work in Tokyo, you work in all these centers of capitalism and commerce. And it was so interesting to see the two of mm. them combined. Do you see these pieces as um, kind of cultural critique or as cultural affirmation or as, I mean, what are they? How, how did people react to them and how did you position them? You respond to that one. Well, you know, in my work, I always like to critique and put something out there which makes people question certain um, subjects, but as well make them see with, with humor. I think that's really important. And I think that's exactly what we did in American Chateau. And uh, I think sometimes my work can be a bit harsh, or I have more, you know, that you can really see like, oh, okay, you know, you see it and, and you see that I am criticizing a certain subject. And, and with Heimer's uh, design, let's say, coming through it, it became a bit more, um, yeah, easier to digest, I subtle think, and, yeah. subtle, and, and I think that was really good, plus, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually coming out now, this project that we did, because that, well, that's actually in images in the States, when we're in the States. Now, the thing is that Ninka has always been critical, you know, these, yeah, are, these are actually... The yeah. inspiration wall. 
in which we, we <laughs> took icons of That's very German, the American. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though we could say the, the funk food. You know, <laughs> no, but this project was interesting because for us it was actually this gallery that shows design, that shows art. That was one of the first ones in London trying to make something different, you know. And, and what they ask us is like, why don't you make a project together? So it was a challenge. And I tell you something, when we were doing these projects, I was doing a sofa for Fritz Hansen. And it was so, you know, looking at the millimeter of everything and the, you know, everything from the moment in which you make the piece to the end, you know. And here we were discussing about completely crazy things, you know, like Ninka wanted to make these monuments of these ladies that are completely extravagant, you know, with a lot of uh, breasts, like you can see there. And, uh, you know, and we discuss about the theme of America and the excess of it. And how can we make this project, you know, into something really um, special and elegant and interesting? And so we try to work with discipline, with disciplines I know, which is to make things with quality. And um, I think little by little, Ninka started to get into sculpture. So we made pieces like this. This is a sculpture made by Ninka. It's like a sort of a Jean d'Arc, you know, made of marble. Or she started to draw plates, you know, in ceramics. We started to use, um, you know, the kind of capacities that we had nearby, combining the fantasy of the work combining the, you know, the emotions of the different things, experimenting and trying to get themes. This was a sort of a donut virgin, like really strange, that was melting because she was praying, because she was too fat, you know, this kind of thing. So how was, how was it received by... It was, the they they thought we were crazy. Selected. Like nobody understood it. Of course, this was the gallery. Well, some people understood that that was a cabinet, you know, like this one, which was called, by the way, New York is Miami because of the colors. And, um, but you know, when they saw an image like that, they didn't understand it. They were like, oh, you guys, uh, so you're designers, right? And I said, like, yes, you know. So <laughs> this was a little bit, probably they got a little bit shocked about it. But on the other hand, on the no, other it hand. Was, I think it was received yeah, It was really well received. Well, but, uh, um, there are still, because the art and design subjects were touching as well at the moment, I think that's still for people really hard to digest and to uh, open up for that. So we showed in many uh, contemporary design of um, art galleries, but still the public is more, you know, they have a problem still with the fact that it's also design. Also the fact that I'm more into photography, uh, let's say fine art and you're coming from design you know that whole combination as well you see that um, for people it's difficult they rather would like to put it in a box they cannot put a name yet on it yeah so you sh you've shown the show in uh, different cities in different countries this one yes yeah. this um, one yes was there any difference how it was perceived i mean is there like a cultural thing where one country is like oh yeah it's no problem at all and one you know is there a trend or? I think, I think it's kind of like, it depends where you are. The, the funny thing is like a lot of these projects that really made it into the industry, you know, they're projects that started as, as, a, as an art exhibition. You know, at the beginning, I remember when we were in Barcelona and the first exhibition or the one in London, it was like, we had no money. We used the material that was nearby to make whatever piece on a theme that we liked. We proposed it. People came. Funny thing is like, in uh, the first product that was produced, there was somebody that was uh, a really serious architect from Spain called o Oscar Tusquets, you know, which is a very, you know, he was friends of Dali, you know, like a very interesting guy. And, and this guy that has this company called BD Barcelona just came by and said, hey, um, what do you do with these tables and these vases? I mean, do you produce them? And I said, producing? Um, well, no, we just make them with a friend. And, you know, it's kind of like, for us, the word production, it was like, even though I studied industrial design, it was far away, you know, I was really far for industrializing anything. So the thing is like, we started with the galleries and people came to these shows and some industrial people came to those shows and we ended up understanding that um, piece of that gallery show could have make it in the industry. Industry though, not distorting the project. So we always try to fusion and you know, make it understandable to this company that we could make something very much how we wanted it, but in the industry. And today we have to say that a lot of these products, like I mean, these cabinets, these things, they're successful. A lot of them are successful in the market, you know, through different companies. And, uh, but we still work in this, in this way of like, this was the Fritz Hansen, by the way. The, but you know, we still work a lot with, with uh, you know, experimenting with galleries because what we understood at the end is like without breaking these boundaries, without breaking this border, you don't really make it into anything interesting anymore. So this was, by the way, the first image of Ninka that she made. It was a real bird. It was the cover of Icon, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, something like that. 
Um, <laughs> when you went from this first project, from, from the first gallery show, from the first idea, this is what I want to do, to industry, <coughs> was it a struggle to um, preserve the essence of what you wanted to do? Did you feel that in the industry, that the partners were telling you, oh, but we have to do it this and that way, and you had to, oops, and you had to kind of protect your idea, or was it always that they wanted it to be just like you, like, I mean, that, that it was kind of a smooth transition? How did this transition, or how did you experience that? Mm, well, you want to respond to that? I think, I think that's always really difficult. I think you come in with a really fresh idea, mm. most of the time, and it's, it's only really rarely that this really fresh idea is picked up right away, and it goes on the market like how it's, you know, there's all... <laughs> <laughs> it always goes through a mill and, and it's changed or words, it's, it's doing strange things and, and if you're lucky, uh, I think something comes out which is closest to what you've meant to Yeah, to I, think, I think at the end we have a lot of discussion about how we really make things, you know, also with the, with industry. And uh, what I've realized is that it doesn't matter what you have in your head, at the end of the day, it is true that we ended up speaking in no matter what way we, we ended up speaking with the with the companies you know and ended up understanding you know what they what it's really working and what it isn't what is clear is like we are never going to sell ourselves to the devil you know we're kind of respecting with who do we want to work in which way we would like to work and if if it matches then great what they know is that they're going to have a machine of enthusiasm and a machine of working because what we do is like as soon as we arrive to a company we just go and work, start to question things, start to understand what hasn't been done, what hasn't, you know, what, what they haven't made before. You know, I remember the first time I went to the Baccarat company to make these editions, that like you've seen some of them in the images. We were discussing with them, you know, like they've never, like really made, you know, they never, for example, wanted to mix ceramics with uh, crystal. And I said to them, why don't we try it, you know? And it was like a thing of, uh, you know, a banal. You know, like the French response. You know? They were like, pas possible. you know, and we were completely shocked about what it. What did you do to make it well, make it's, possible? I think that you just made it easier. You just start to discuss it and start to say, well, you know, if we use ceramics, you know, it might be interesting because it will elevate the crystal in a certain way or it will do the opposite that crystal does to crystal, which is, you know, for example, something which, which was quite fascinating was that uh, the use of ceramic in crystal, even though it's really different industrially because it's really hard to uh, control in terms of production because they have different dilatations, different material. But for example, the light enters the crystal and the, when the light en enters the crystal, it becomes alive. But then if you can, if you, by using ceramic, let the light stay inside this crystal, then it becomes completely different, you know. It just creates a new life. And that was the success of this project. You know, it's like suddenly, and, and, and this is, I always said that working with us is like bungee jumping, right? The first time you try it and you're scared of shit. The second time, well, <laughs> it's better. Last time. And then in three weeks, you're like jumping, like, you know, with a cell phone, you know, I mean, it's kind of like you get used yeah. to it. And, and I, think, I think people are getting used, at the beginning, everybody was really worried of this is the way you're working, it's really strange. We don't work like that. Because, for example, we have a tendency to go and try to prototype things immediately and try to discuss about what is produced instead of waiting for, you know, like, uh, we have a different way. We're just, like, very active to, to look at the problematic and understand it. And, uh, you know, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll just oh, don't worry, just, there's a lot of images. Enter, enter it again. <laughs> I hope you have fun with images because it's the we we could stay with every image to explain you much more technically of what it is about, but I think the what we would love is to get a little bit of more fresh, um, fresh air. You know, I think we what we like is just to work in this way, which is, you know, flexible. And at the end, she's an artist, I'm a designer. We discuss about things and we have results. Hmm? I have one more question, and then I'd like to open up to you guys and really um, have more questions. Um, you have to put the slideshow. I'll do it, I'll do it. I love to do this. You can ask the question. Can you listen? You can do everything at the same time. Don't worry about it. So my question is, um, I know that Lanzarote is a very, very special place for you and people who know me know that Iceland is the same thing for me. So it's, it's quite interesting. We had these dialogues about the two islands. Um, in Lanzarote there was a, a, an artist uh, Cesar Manrique, who really made the island uh, how it is today by preventing it from going down the route of traditional tourism and of kind yeah. of having these 
bunkers of hotels built everywhere on the coastline and kind of promoting politically some kind of ecotourism and some kind of uh, different way of doing things. So um, as an example, it shows how kind of political um, art or design can be. Um, how do you see yourself, kind of how do you see your own practice? Is, it, is there any kind of political agency? Is there anything where you say, um, I'll have to do it. Yeah, you have to do it. Too Sorry. To do yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think I, you, you, you maybe respond to that. That's nice, the, the question. Respond. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think for, for us, it's really and important that our, we love to work with artisans and with craftsmanship. And we, we, um, we really like when that can resist the time so that we not forget about uh, certain techniques. Working with Bacaha, you know, we, we worked with, actually with the artisan who was the best artisan of France and uh, who won a medal and, and he knew exactly to cut in a certain way. And other people, you know, he was already old, he was retired. They had to ring him up, you know, would you please come in for this project? Because there's nobody else who can do it. And, you know, in that way, we like to work with these companies to kind of make it a popular uh, craft again. Yeah. So it, it resists the time, and we can continue with that. And I think that's really, you know, in that way we yeah. always, um, yeah, think that is really important. So no, we don't forget, yeah. because there are incredible techniques. Yeah. But th that's what Manrique was saying, you were putting that example before, of, uh, you know, kind of like, it's interesting what happened in Lanzarote, and for us it's interesting because we, we had a lot of inspiration in this island, but it's really good because what happened is like the artist, Cesar Manrique, which was an artist and not a designer, but he, he made a lot of things for preventing that the, that the image of the island would have become like the other Canary Islands, which are completely touristic and terrible in many ways. Like he just put rules. He just said, hey, this is the way you have to do the houses. This is the way in every rotonda you have a sculpture made in this way. Uh, you, you've got things to teach the people certain things. And, you know, we, we find inspiration on that. But that, what Ninka is saying is also very interesting is that um, we know after 10 years of making this discipline and discussing about from how she has to dress to how do we make a crystal piece or how do we do a chair comfortable, you know, we've understood something that at the end of the day, the grain we're given to the design profession, which is fun, you know, it's really to understand that there is a tradition behind, that there is a way of making things, there is a certain responsibility out of the creators and the young creators, like people that are studying here, for example, you know, and they need to be teach that in a certain way, if you preserve techniques, if you preserve ways of doing things, by looking at them in a completely different angle, then the future, not only of those companies, but also of the country and of the future of the design will be much better than how it is. And this is something we understood at the end. You know, today we have to say, well, you know, we started, we were young kids, you know, starting to make it whatever and making a little bit of money. Now the thing is getting more serious. It's getting more like, you know, we're having something behind. We discuss with people that have a lot of talent as well. And we discuss about what do we care of? And what do we care of is to make beautiful things that preserve, you know, that they're made in a certain way, that tell stories, that they're not only traditional, but they're also focusing in a different way of how this profession is. And what we understand is that there is many ways of looking at this profession. <laughs> there is not only one, there is a lot of them. And you can arrive from the other side and make a much more interesting mm -hmm. chair or a much more interesting sculptor. <laughs> You know, and that's the point. Like Ninka is completely influenced, being a fine art student, she's completely influenced by what do we learn from design. Me, being a design student, trace on a Bauhaus way, because that's how my school was, and when I went to Paris, the same, I was influenced so much by her. The first day I met her was the best day of my life, because I started to change. <laughs> you know? Sorry about that. That's, that's my Spanish soul. <laughs> it had to come. <laughs> no fun. No fun, yeah. <laughs> no, but it is the truth. So I'll, I'll open to all of you so we can have a, a little bit of time to actually speak with you guys. And are there any questions that are burning on your, on your mind? You can also ask them in German if you don't feel comfortable with asking at such a big audience. Then I'll, I'll translate. We understand. Can I have some water? Is <laughs> yeah. there water still or no? Oh, there's no water. Ooh. Not here. No, it's okay. okay. We'll, we'll get it late.
inquiry question. <laughs> See, that's what I call down to earth. <laughs> yeah, it is hot, eh? <laughs> That's easy. Well, first of all, I think my design is not Baroque at all. First of all, because that's a big mistake. Because it isn't. I mean, Baroque is a completely different thing, first of all. Second of all, her work is not pornographic at all, neither. <laughs> you know, it's like not at all. There is a link. It's femininity. Maybe femininity is interesting. Um, I like femininity in design. You know, that's not Baroqueness. Femininity is like things can be thin at the end. You know, if you do a sofa like that, then it's comfortable because it's thick, muscly, but then it ends up like that. You know, I still remember, I went to, um, I did a jewelry store, and I said, I want the facade, because it's all about sensation design. I want a facade to be marble, exactly with a Saint Laurent marble, which is really black, heavy, scarce. You know, it was a facade 10 meter long, it's somewhere there. I said to him, I want this brass door. And he said to me, brass door high, man. It were four meter high, brass door how you want it, one and a half ton. I think it's gonna be hard to open the, the door. And I said, yeah. Okay, let's put it this way. You look at the facade, but I want the door to be open like that, with two fingers, feminine. And he was like, that was a challenge immediately. So he looked for all the henches, everything possible to make it that way. I tell you, everybody remembers that sign. So it's all about sensation. I don't know if I re I'm replying to your question, but you make me think. <laughs> so I just expose it. And that's how I am, you know. But to be honest, um, I love your way of perceiving this because your way of perceiving is, it's great. Some other people will say, you know, you guys have nothing to do with each other. Though we're married and we have a child, so I hope we are having to do something. But I think it's an interesting vision. Yours is one way of looking at what we do. There's other ways of looking at what we do. You know. That's the response. Yeah. And then the second thing I was I mean I'm German, I'm not very German. And I never <laughs> never do design things like that. And maybe I also never like it somehow, because I'm so German. But then I remember that Kulani also kind of German. <laughs> and I was wondering, do you really see like you know the work of Shishukamani? Is there any relation for you? Is Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> as, as for an Arab, he might tell you he loved Kolani even too much. But uh, and I, I you know I think Kolani the only relation about Kolani and I is that we both like beautiful women. You know, that's the only relation. And uh, and, I, and, the only, and I'm completely envious of him, because if I have his age and he still looks so good, then man, I give it, you know, <laughs> I'm super happy about that. I met him, eh? he's a really nice guy. And yes, he's very different than the usual German. But there is no relation between us. He's so much futuristic. I'm looking at the past. I get inspired by looking at how they made things before. Because I do think they have to be conserved more than going ahead. Though I love, you know, for example, I discuss a lot with another German, no, Konstantin Gritschik, I know him really well. I discuss, you know, he loves t technology. He speaks about technology a lot. When I discuss with him, like, technology for me is like, whoa. When they start to speak about technology, I'm like, whoa. You know, I use museum materials. 
crystal ceramics, things that are there. Plastic is like another odyssey for me, which I might start, but it's not my main interest. But Colani is future. Jaime is past future. <laughs> Let's call it that way. <laughs> Do they expect an artist? Do they expect a um, bestseller or something? Uh, is this not a thing that you think about? Uh, is that to me or to her? To me? No. Ah, together, yeah. Together. What do you think? Do they expect a bestseller or do they expect uh, they have expectation? Yeah, it might be an well, important question. Mm -hmm. It is indeed. Or maybe whether you kind of, whether you're aware of this expectation, whether maybe it's like also whether it influences what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think it influences us a lot with what we're designing. Um, I think <coughs> s uh, some companies like Fritz Hansen in the start, they were a bit, uh, well, they kind of asked us they to put a lot design of a, a sofa. The couch and um, they were at the same time while we were making it they were scared and they took a lot of time to rethink the things to ask people what they would think about it if it was a big risk for them to come out with um, the sofa and in the end it turned out to be a really good sofa so it became well, kind of a no, best no, no. seller it's so like it's like it's not it's not even uh it was uh, proven yeah. that it was very successful it, it sold a lot or it's selling a lot and so they're very happy and so they're kind of wanting to continue to make things with us but for in the start it took a long time you know to uh, well to work with us and to is it, is it different to you the approach to the product for example check cutting you also have to go to the product that is really beautiful but yeah also at the same point a little bit show product so no it's never it's never a show product for me like when it's a product it's a product so None of the products are show products? For, for me, no. But you have some materials. No, you have like, like no because like the show, uh, listen, at the end of the day, it's not, product, uh, you know, it's not productive for anybody. First of all, we don't need more advertisement. Second of all, no, it's true. It's like we already, we're doing what we're doing and people are really curious. They already can take any of these images and they'll fill up a magazine because they love that. That's what press likes. Just an image that looks cool, right? It's true. It is how it is. But what I believe, it's um, to respond to your to your question. I think it's a very interesting question when you feel when you really can respond to it in the way of, you know, there is expectations in companies. Of course, some people see you as as an image, so they want a show product. And so many times we say we don't do show products. What we do is what we love in that moment. We try to question your atelier. What do you make? Some people come to us with not enough challenge. We love the challenge. I think that's a good response because. The challenge is what he activates our way of working. If there's no challenge, Fritz Hansen was a challenge incredible. We were doing, you know, all these photos with, uh, well, Ninka was doing those, you know, these photos with the silicon breast and all this stuff. And we were doing the American Chateau thinking about a showpiece. Yes, there, yes. Why? Because we're questioning a theme. We, want, we don't want to, this piece goes to a gallery. We make one, we make six. We're experimenting with a material. We're learning something out of it. But to respond to Fritz Hansen or to Baccarat or to Magis, we're talking about industrial design. We want to do something that works. We don't want to make the company fail. We want to understand them. And I think that's the main point of why our collaborations are successful today, is that no matter who we have in front, we discuss. We said, hey, how's your company? You know, what can we do to help it? Or, or can you help us on this? You know, it's kind of like there's a discussion. And at the end of the day, it's not as scary as it seems. It's very simple. We're both very naive and we go to a place and we like to work, we like to question. What we really do though, is to put in a, a, a time in which we can both experiment and get something out of the atelier. Because what happens a lot of times is that companies don't do that. Companies think they're gonna get something new from a marketing fair analysis. Sorry, but it's not true. You know, companies that get something new are companies that say at a certain moment, no matter how big they are, hey guys, Stop the, stop the machine, you, 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 and you, go to that room, and for two months, question what we're doing. Invite guys that have nothing to do with what we do, discuss about what we're doing. 
I'm sure from there there's gonna be something interesting coming. That's how we work. Seriously. And so many times it's like a crash, but then it becomes interesting. Not always it works. I mean, it's never flowers here. We, 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 we work a lot for it, you know. Yeah. You know the phenomenon in the 80s when, uh, when uh, the developer uh, Italian companies came from Mexico to Europe, some German designers, they produced products maybe about 10 times. They were all around the world to be seen in all the magazines, but they were not sold. And mm -hmm. so this phenomenon, I, I ask, is it, so it's different. With your Very different. Like at the moment, uh, you know, I mean, depends what you're talking about. Some of the gallery shows we're doing, their pieces, yes, they, you look at the cabinet with the, with the skyscraper thing, you know, maybe we sold three of them and they go to galleries and they cost a lot of money because they're polished by hand, they're very complex. But that has nothing to do if you compare, you know, like, um, Bacalas pieces selling worldwide or Fritz Hansen pieces selling maybe worldwide. Yadro is the best example there, maybe you can speak about that. Well, Yadro is an interesting example because Yadro is a very classical company in our country, in uh, well, in my country, in Spain, and um, it's a, it's a company like Mason, you know, like they do porcelain figurines and stuff. And uh, well, some people told me that I, w I was crazy when I started to work with them. They were like, "What what what are you gonna do for them?" The thing is, like, exactly that was why it was interesting, because a company like that wanted to renew themselves in a certain way, and what I did is like built up an atelier with them and started to work. And today I can tell you that we're 20% up mm -hmm. making porcelain, classical porcelain. Mm -hmm. Why are we 20% up in a crisis world? Why there's 1,000 workers in the era of the iPhones working like 300 years ago? That's what I said before. We tried to think about how can we do something with this tradition to make it go up. I think questioning design in the way you were telling before, like these ideas of the 80s, that was great, you know? It still you need to be questioned all the time. If we don't question things, we never get anywhere. We're not the perfect solution, we're just one of the solutions, or maybe one of the questions. <laughs> you know, that's how I see it at least. Yeah. Yeah, maybe also the unsuccessful design in the sense of how much it's sold is very important to give it another turn to another yeah, of course. things. Especially yeah. like the aesthetics. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like Rather than yeah. Research for the next yeah, it brings us to different stages. So yeah, exactly. You know, when you do a piece for a gallery, it's a different, it's a different mm -hmm. mentality. The gallery wants a piece that it says something, that it's provoking something, that it's communicating something. And uh, obviously, you have no limit. But that free soul, that free area, gives you a breath of air for whatever can come industrially after. And I think that's how we used it at least. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Uh, I think everyone's glad when they have a little break. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's one. There's one. That's like the question in a way we had before is kind mm. of, are you like are you affirmative of that culture that you are with your work creating that culture or how or like is that is that the question? Yeah. Is it, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think <laughs> maybe, but uh, I'm not really thinking about it that much. I think we influence each other so much mm -hmm. that maybe at the end of the day we we will melt on the way we are uh, expressing and criticizing, I think. I don't know, I think, I, I don't really think about that that much, you know, mm. to be honest. There's no, you know what's funny on the work we're doing? There is not, not much strategy about it. There is a lot of production of work. We work our ass off, but because we enjoy it. Because it's like, when you enjoy it, you really work well, you know, like you cannot stop. It's like a machine going. But, and the finality of it is that Sometimes the only thing we do is like, okay, we go on holiday, we look at what we've done, and we're like, oh shit, I would never do that again. <laughs> we're like, yes, this is the way we should do the next thing. Things are getting sharper, you know? 
for, ins for instance, like a few years ago when Inca was taking my, my portraiture, I was very happy about it. I was like, okay, I'm creating a full image, which is what I like. But then today, man, he doesn't let me anymore. I hate it because somebody's like, okay, do the clown. And I said, fuck you, man. I'm not going to do the clown for you. I'm not a clown. I'm a designer, you know? So I'll make something nice. Just take a portrait, like a normal one, right? So this tells you a lot of how things progress, you know? Things progress in the way you look at things. The only thing we try is, is to be observative and try to be critical as well with what we do. It's changing a lot, you know? For example, like the design I'm doing in the last three years have nothing to do with what I've done seven, eight years ago. It's always evolving, and I think that's the beauty of it, you know? It's the involvement. It's this kind of evolution, discussion. I mean, that's why it's lovely to come here, to confront you today. You, you know, if we don't analyze things, we don't go anywhere, and I think that's the fun of it. The most important is to have fun, though, with what you do. I think that's the, the base of it. Not, I not. Do what you believe in. Yeah. You know, you were telling me be before, yourself. what would you say to the students? You, you told me that before. You yeah. Know? Yeah, what would you say to the students? Well, I, I, would, I would say be yourself. You know, that's exactly what you have to do. That's what I say to my students. You know, the first thing I say is like, try to be yourself. Actually, I base the whole, I, I give a master course and I base the whole master course on, on discovering your identity because I do believe that everyone is unique. And that if you put those ingredients into what you design, you might become so special, you know, you, be, you might just be yourself really, start to be really what, you know, what you really are. So that's my, my yeah. you know. Is there a the last question? Is there anything you wish you had learned in design education and you didn't know? <coughs> well, I never really had design education. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm crazy, I'm crazy <laughs> you have to do it different. In education. Education. I, I should have been crazy. better in, in business. They should have, because in fine art school uh, in Holland, they never taught me about business. So I'm that's the business what he man. does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you want to answer it still? What I should have learned? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think now she answered it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I, I totally believe this fun aspect in, in your work. And I also see very much um, a lot of funny things in, in your work. But there's also a very particular perspective on, on gender issues, or, or do I misunderstand that? Sorry, there is very there is critical. gender issue in, in your uh, work, it's also kind of critical perspective on the. Well, yeah, I always like to criticize in my work. And uh, yeah, I'm in that sense also, I analyze more the things. And, and Jaime's work, on the other hand, is, I think, much more. Uh, with utility. Yeah, I think you get it right. But, but this is uh, exactly the point of this division of fine art. She's educated fine art. She's very analytic on that. I'm educated design. So there is a certain going into that's need something you need to use. So why would we make it out or communicate it that way? Do you understand? So when, when design becomes analytical, when it's art? <laughs> Maybe you're inventing something that. <laughs> no, 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 that's not the no, point no, I'm no. saying. But it's a different, it's a much more uh, flexible. I think it's much more flexible. I mean, design profession to me is much more flexible than, than, than the art, even though art seems free. I don't believe it. Art is really what you were saying before. It's more related to that sort of uh, matters you were talking about before. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, you know. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. It's our pleasure.